Akriti as well, who are part of the team and will be available for any facilitation support, any policy support, any on-ground support that would be required, and we'll be happy to take it forward. With this, I'm eagerly looking forward to the discussion and understanding how Invest India can be involved to take the conversation forward as well. Thank you so much. Chubi, back to you. Thank you so much, Varun, for giving an insight into Invest India and the investment scenario. I would like to call our next panelist, Dr. Shishendu Mukherjee. He is the Mission Director, Project Management Unit, DBT, BIRAC, BMGF, as well as BMGF Trust. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Varun, and thank you, Shubhi, uh, for the invite today and um, uh, a lot of familiar phrases uh, to this panel discussion. Vaccine. As uh, under the biotech spotlight series, which you are carrying, vaccine is the agenda for today. And uh, I, I know everybody vaccines earlier is to be thought of as a routine thing, but last two years has taught us how important vaccine has been. So I will, in the next eight or nine minutes, as allotted to me, I will tell you our journey on the vaccine development, not only on COVID which really, you know, India played a very critical role in developing COVID vaccine, not only for us, but also around the globe. I think that was a very critical part, but also how India contributes into the global vaccine development strategy of the world and uh, world health. And uh, Manjul will be speaking after me. He leads one of the important vaccine companies, so he will also throw light. But I think uh, as as the data says, as the, you know, every third child in the world is immunized by one of the vaccines, which is coming out from India. And that really gives us very a sense of, uh, you know, proudness with uh, in the, uh, amongst the Indian, uh, Indian researchers, scientific community and our citizens, but also we contribute great way in uh, maintaining, uh, you know, improving the global health indices. So the next couple of minutes, I don't know how the slide moves to the next slide. Sorry. So I think any vaccine works is on the innovation. Scientific innovation is critical for developing any vaccine. And, you know, there are three phases of development, discovery, development, delivery. I think that is very key, uh, uh, you know, element in any vaccine research. And to do a vaccine research is not only that you, you have uh, understanding of the uh, basic science, but very basic science critical to its immunology, to the disease burden, to the, you know, the infrastructure development that has to be clear and then follows the development part of it. How you can, you know, uh, translate that proof of concept to uh, product. the development path, understanding the regulatory pathway, the uh, IP strategies into it. What are the IP issues and all into it? And then once you do this combined discovery and development, the delivery strategy, I think, which I think um, you know, our colleague from the Ministry of Health and also, um, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Ahmed and uh, Manjul will speak about it. So I think these are the very, uh, and I will concentrate myself basically on the discovery and the de development path of the vaccine as in the National Biopharma mission, the INCEPI mission and BIRAC literally plays a very critical role there. Just to introduce BIRAC, I think it is a, a public sector undertaking under the Department of Biotechnology. We support and enable the innovation ecosystem in this country from concept to reality. That is our main mandate is, and we support across from very conceptual stages from funding at pre proof of concept till the product commercialization, not only the funding part, but enabling part in regulatory IP market development exit strategy. We work across that through our incubator network and various programs along the length and breadth of our initiatives. The National Biopharma Mission, which is, let us now focus on which really instigates biopharma related activities and vaccine is one of the part of it, was established by the Department of Biotechnology and the World Bank to really enable the biopharma ecosystem in this country. Not only research, but the <laughs> part of it, which is very critical in vaccine research and development. So we work across mandates of developing kits, ventilators, bioreactors, vaccines, and vaccine infrastructure is one of the critical elements of that. And during the COVID period, this mission played a very critical role in supporting and developing very important vaccines, along with the mission COVID Suraksha, which was you know, launched by the government of India and through Department of Biotechnology and BIRAC was asked to implement it. 
and that story has been really very important you know in a year's time a vaccine was developed for our country and uh, you know we were you know self sufficient we have achieved self sufficiency in vaccine and we are exporting that as well so now let us let us understand the challenges in the indian vaccine industry and you know uh, just to first the positives of it we are leading max vaccine manufacturers of the world we supply basic advanced vaccines to nearly 150 countries we are the largest global capacity of who pre qualified vaccine manufacturing hubs in this country and i think the vaccine market i'll not talk about it the figure has changed but it is a, one of the big markets but there are challenges also in this field and you know uh, investment uh, novel vaccines are not invested huge capital investment is required it takes a long time covid was a really great example because we all got together it's high risk high risk regulatory challenges then in incidence burden the epidemiological data of the incidence uh, the disease inf uh, the immunogenicity evaluations are basically the validation pathways are not very available so i think these needs to be developed so these are one of the challenges which is we the industry faces the researchers faces our initiatives within the system is to really address those challenges and create those infrastructure to support not only the basic bench of vaccine science, but also the infrastructure as well. So, you know, if you see the vaccine development pathways, it is discovery and early development, then there's the preclinical development, then the product development, GFP batch manufacturing, phase one, phase two, three. These are, this is the pathway of the vaccine. And we within the government of India system literally are trying to support each and every pathways to take the, and through the national biopharma mission, we have mechanisms to handhold them. So that leads to not only the, you know, vaccine development in lab, but to scale up it to the industry, then help them to validate it across the clinical trial sites in this country, the bioassay labs, the immunogenicity labs, which has been created, the animal facilities, all is required. It is not only the science, but the infrastructure, which is plays very critical part in, and that's what the idea of the biopharma mission is to develop them. There are challenges, uh, you know, um, uh, identifying the early markers of vaccine efficiency, defining the correlates of protection, analyzing mechanism of loss, lasting protective immunity. Now we have all been, uh, 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 you know, vaccinated with the various COVID vaccines. The studies are underway. How long are the immunogenicity is there? So that needs to be really understood well to see how long your vaccine lasts. The, the, these studies are all are underway, and this all we support through our various clinical trial networks. You know, so novel essay, we need validation path, sites, we are all developing that parallelly. In pandemic, what was the knowledge gap? The disease transmission was not known. Duration and sites of spreading, population at risk, serological responses to the infection needs to be, was need to be studies, the persistent immunity, the attack rate of the virus. These are all a new thing. And but our scientific community rose to the occasion and addressed each of these challenges to you know develop a very uh, comprehensive, uh, very good vaccine, which literally protect, uh, protected us to a very uh, rationally good levels so that we all got protected. The vaccine portfolios, uh, let us talk, uh, apart from COVID, which the national we are looking at is a universal flu vaccine. The dengue vaccine is at, at advanced stage of research and development the cholera vaccine and the chikungunya vaccine. These all vaccines are at a very uh, different stages of development, which you can see from my slide. And these are vaccines which literally our country needs. So we are working on them at a regular, and these are the future vaccines which are going to come out. At the COVID vaccine portfolio, we worked at a couple of vaccines and my next slide will show these are the vaccines which came out from our COVID consortium, the Mission COVID Suraksha. And uh, we have a couple of vaccines uh, which had come out. The mission COVID Suraksha, which was dedicated to vaccine research and development, we didn't concentrate on anything else, no diagnostics, nothing, but only vaccine. It was a 900 crore for 12 months program of the government of India, where we focused on vaccines and its infrastructure development, which is very, very critical, as I described to you earlier. So you can see the list of the vaccine which came out from the, and I think hats off to the researchers, and the companies which really work together, the DNA vaccine, the first globally first DNA vaccine which came out from India is uh, from the mission COVID Suraksha, the Corbivax vaccine, which is a protein subunit vaccine, which got to UA, also came out from India. 
the uh, the internasal vaccine that one has been going on, the mRNA vaccine is also just now the emergency use has been given in. Supporting infrastructure was very critical to help these vaccines to move fast and relative infrastructure was created and that brought is the idea. Now we are, the future is that any new pandemic comes, God willing, nothing should come out, but we are ready with our infrastructure, with our augmentation uh, networks, with our uh, capacities, we are ready to address any challenges which we might, might the country faces in future. We have created length and breadth clinical trial sites across the country. So these cohorts have been developed. So any vaccine comes out needs to be tried and tested before it goes to the regulator. So the sites were developed and this is very important to take it to the next level. I am conscious about the time, so I will let it move fast. So I think the infrastructure has been well developed to support new vaccine research and development, especially do, doing it in an accelerated way. I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Mukherjee, for giving us an insight into all the policies that are there for enabling the vaccine development in India. I would like to call our next speaker, Mr. Dr. Manju Joshi Pura, who is the Senior Vice President Innovation and New Products, Cadillac Pharmaceuticals, to, give a, to give, give a talk on innovations in vaccines. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Can I have the control to share my presentation, please? So we are sharing it with you. So uh, thank you, Invest India and the organizers for giving us the opportunity to talk about uh, the vaccine scenario in India, especially the, the opportunities and challenges. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to take you through the journey of one of our novel vaccine that we just brought out, uh, which is a novel uh, rabies vaccine, and then uh, take you along the journey and talk in last two minutes about the challenges that we faced along the journey. Uh, I'm still waiting, uh, Shubhi, for the control. Sir, just one second, sir. One second, sir. Uh, as we know, we are a 70-year-old uh, uh, Indian pharma company. We were established uh, soon after independence, and we have a long history of uh, uh, of our uh, presence in in uh, domestic business, international business, biologics, and and also uh, vaccines. Uh, so we operate our biology business through our uh, separate subsidiary called CPL Biologics, and all of our biologic activity are uh, are through that uh, unit. So uh, I hope you are able to see my presentation, my screen. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to talk about uh, development of our journey of our subunit uh, vaccines. Uh, that we undertook very recently, and it, the, the product is now in the market after approval from DCGI. So, as you can uh, see, the uh, fatality rate of rabies among the viral preventable disease, uh, vaccine preventable disease, is the highest in rabies. You can see number of diseases along uh, along the panel. And COVID doesn't figure in this list because the mortality of COVID in nineteen in 2022 is much less than uh, what is listed at the bottom of the panel. So that's why it is not there. But rabies is the most fatal of the vaccine preventable diseases. Rabies is 100% vaccine preventable, but still there are deaths, and that's the challenge that we try to address in our uh, journey of this uh, vaccine development. So just a minute about the rabies vaccine scenario. It is uh, the vaccine is available since last 100 over years. 1885 was the first vaccine, and then uh, it was uh, you know spinal cord uh, neurogenic tissue with a lower immunogenicity. Uh, it lasted about a month, and and now we have for the last 30 40 years a five dose vaccine which covered uh, you know which were given over a period of uh, one month. So many of us remember this 14 dose injection, uh, which was sort of evolved in 1911, and 14 injections were given subcutaneously around the umbilicus in the tummy if you happen to have a dog bite. So the currently current generation of vaccines were developed back in 1976. So if, if you can you know imagine the evolution scenario for last almost 40, 50 years. The world has traveled a long distance in vaccine and biologics. Rabies vaccine stayed where it was back in 1976. And the current regime, the current generation vaccine is five injections spread over 
over a month. So zero, three, seven, 14, 28 days. You have to take five injections if you get a dog bite, right? So no uh, progress was done. And the simple reason was that the rabies is a zoonotic disease, is a tropical disease. The disease got limited to developing world. Right? So developed countries all eliminated rabies. So rabies became a disease of Asia and Africa and developing world. And that's why the multinational companies were not interested. And that is where, you know, the solution had to come from one of the Indian companies. And we took up that challenge to bring solution for India from within India. Uh, because the deaths, if you look at India, bears the highest burden of uh, rabies disease uh, in India. There are still about 20,000 deaths annually is highest other other countries are also located in Southeast Asia and Africa. So the solution need to come had to come from one of the companies from these countries and we took up that challenge. So the challenge in the current vaccine scenario is that because of the technological challenges, the potency is inconsistent often. Stability is a challenge and clearly lately there was the availability the short supply. Um, and because of the complex regimen, only a fraction of dog bite victims get fully covered, right? If six, fifth, 20, 30% of the animal bite victims in India get anti rabies treated, are you not surprised? Because we have a solution available and still only, you know, 20, 30% gets fully covered because of the complex regime. And the problem is if you have larger number of shots, injections, you know, the compliance, becomes less and less. So beyond three injections, the compliance is much, you know, is getting reduced. And if you have five dose vaccine, only half would come turn up for full course, right? So therefore the unmet need was some innovation with simple and shorter regime. So that is where we came into picture. And after 10 years of research, we came out with uh, first Ruby's G protein vaccine which is prepared on virus like particle platform technology. And we're the first in the world with three dose intramuscular injection. And we have a better compliance, uh, which is because of easy to follow regime. The entire dosage schedule finish, gets finished in about a week, seven days, less visits. It's, it's convenient because it's, it's a liquid vaccine ready to use. It's intramuscular and no reconstitution required unlike the lyophilized vaccine available in the market today. And importantly, saves direct and indirect healthcare cost, right? That's the most important part, which is uh, important in countries like India and other uh, low and middle income countries. Sorry, my slides have a problem. And... Okay, so uh, subunit vaccines, uh, were sort of tried earlier uh, in since 19 early 19th century and uh, not 1977 and 1983 there were some vaccines uh, which were uh, designed to get the rabies g protein vaccine as a subunit vaccine but they were not successful for a variety of reasons So we have been able to successfully stabilize this uh, rabies G protein using recombinant technology and uh, using SF9 bacterial platform, uh, and we've been able to come out with a with a drug candidate uh, with a vaccine candidate which we can take it through. From the preclinical stage, we realized that this is a highly potent vaccine, as you can see, with just two dose injection of five microgram rabies G protein, it just overwhelmed the current. Uh, approved vaccine by a long margin and and we we realized that the antibody neutralizing antibody titers were also quite high well beyond the stipulated who requirement for uh, for getting the vaccine so i'm just uh, fast forwarding to the pivotal trial that we did which was a randomized uh, control trial uh, multi center entirely done in india so we where we randomized 800 volunteers in two is to one ratio with a comparator. Um, and we could see that the it is extremely safe uh, because of the uh, purity of the vaccine. 
because only the immunogenic part, the rabies G protein is used in vaccine and no other part of the virus or DNA or, or any other component of the virus gets into the vaccine. So it's extremely safe, as we can see. The adverse event were less than half. So we had much better safety profile compared to the reference vaccine, which were used in the trial. Uh, and efficacy was equivalent. So we proved non-inferiority of, of for zero protection at primary endpoint at day 14 and day 42. Uh, both the objectives are met uh, with a comparator in identical zero protection, and it got DCJ approval um, early this year, last year, and we launched the product in this year. So here we have from India a novel three dose recombinant rabies G protein, which is first time in the world. Uh, with an equivalent immunogenicity, immunogenicity compared to the uh, comparator and reference product, which we are using all these years, which had five uh, dose injection spread over over four weeks, and we have this uh, first subunit vaccine, which three dose intramuscular regime at zero three seven days. So all your rabies treatment schedule gets completed within a week. Uh, so uh, this was the innovation that came from. Uh, India by an Indian company, we got uh, publication in number of um, international journals and, and that just uh, peer reviewed article just supports the, uh, the rigor of science behind it. We had a very extensive phase one, phase two studies, which because of shortage of time, I'm not going into detail, but clearly uh, it just stood the rigor of the science uh, uh, across, across, the, across the board and, you know, um, so it's it's fully entirely developed uh, was the entire development took place within India. Now, if I look at the challenges that we you know we look at uh, during development of last eight ten years in developing this vaccine in India, we have multiple agencies for uh, genetically modified products for approval. So that is RCGM and DCGI. So we had to shuttle between the two agencies and and. Uh, um, you know, number of efforts, uh, number of attempts were made to find the time, slot, schedule, and, and timetable to sort of take the programs forward at, at each stage of development. The ecosystem, and we realized that, you know, it's a work in progress. We are changing, changing very fast. But I think if there is a first in the world kind of product, uh, especially in biologics and vaccine, I think our system uh, regulator and, and our, our system for approval uh, probably you know, needs to change. And I think that is one uh, difference that we have found when we developed uh, first in the world product uh, within India and, and other countries. Uh, so I think, uh, especially the regulated market. So I think that is one message I would like to convey through Invest India to the government of India, that we probably need to uh, fasten the pace at which we are changing our system which will support the innovative ecosystem, ecosystem which will support the innovative uh, product development. And vaccine is what, uh, one example, but across the uh, biopharma world, I think that is something which will help the investors and companies to come out with innovative drugs very quickly in India. The other challenge is, as you can see, the product is developed by, India, by an Indian company within India for Indian uh, public health problems such as rabies. So introducing in health system, public health system of a novel vaccine is again a big challenge. Uh, government uh, would need uh, time and it has its own ways to get the drug and vaccine into a system. But I think uh, there has to be a fast track mechanism where the product development has been done in India by an Indian company for a problem which is a major public health problem in India. I think this can be fast tracked. And the entire development was internally funded. So ideally, in other settings, maybe government can support uh, vaccine development programs for uh, diseases of public health importance. Uh, but in this case, uh, this was totally internally funded uh, by the company. And final thing, I, th I think the most important part that we should be proud of in COVID-19 vaccines that we could uh, benefit uh, not the population of India, but other population, the cross country, across uh, low and middle income world um, when COVID-19 came. Uh, but I think we will need the government support and uh, support of our, uh, our system in general 
to make sure that this uh, novel vaccine reaches the people who need it most, and that that is in Africa, sub South Asia, and Latin America across the low and middle income world. So I would think that uh, the vaccine development companies would benefit if there's a support in terms of getting the innovation across the international uh, community, global community, uh, WHO and other agencies and Gavi especially to make sure that the novel vaccine is, is presented and it is evaluated for use across the world. I think that is where the success lies. And uh, I just want to um, end this talk by uh, thanking all of you and thanking uh, especially Invest India to give, you, give us an opportunity to uh, talk and share our views uh, for the vaccine development. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Manjul. It was a very enlightening talk. I mean, thank you for sharing your development journey with us. And I'm sure that it's going to be a game changer. As you mentioned, that only one sixth of the people receive the rabies vaccine. So we'll not only be able to help people in India, but also across the globe. And thank you for sharing your suggestions. I would like to call our next panelist, Mr. Sayyid Ahmed, who's the director and CEO of Tech Invention. Uh, he's there to give us a talk on the opportunities for vaccines in startups. Over to you, sir. Uh, thanks, uh, Shubhi. Uh, can I have access to the uh, to share my screen, please? Yes, sir. Yeah, I would uh, like to thank uh, Invest India for giving me this opportunity to speak, and uh, it is indeed an honor to share this platform with uh, the very esteemed uh, panelists out here. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, uh, my perspective is more from a startup to other startups. It's just been about six years, and the journey has been quite uh, eventful. So this, I'm using this forum since it's being live streamed as kind of an appeal or a shout out to my other uh, fellow startups on some of the do's and don'ts and what could help them navigate this journey successfully if you are focused on the vaccine development domain. Uh, I'm, I'm still waiting for the screen share, please. Uh, yeah. Could you enable the screen share, please? Able to share your screen? Yeah. Is it uh, visible now? Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. We can see that. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, the topic is opportunities for uh, Indian startups in vaccine. So I said uh, my focus would be on my fellow startups. Uh, <clears throat> to start with, the slides are moving. Yeah, are my slides moving? Just in case. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, we can see your slides. Okay, okay. Yeah. To start with, uh, my appeal to all my fellow startups is what are we doing in the vaccine domain uh, right from the beginning? Please have a global uh, perspective. No doubt, uh, India is becoming the most populous country in 2023, just a year from now, and we have immense potential out here. But I think that goes very well with the narrative of uh, also make in India, now it's make for the world. So whatever we do from a scratch, we need to have a global perspective, and that's where the opportunities are, which I will substantiate in my subsequent slides. As far as the opportunities in specific are concerned uh, in my next slide, there are five aspects which I would like to talk about. And the first one is, of course, if you are in the vaccine or the novel biotherapeutics domain, there is immense opportunity to out license the technologies at a global perspective. The difference between what used to be early and now is today, there are companies in the emerging markets, also in the Western world, who are looking at early stage out licensing unlike in the past, but just that we need to make sure that our development protocols are, are, are all aligned to the global uh, perspective and framework, whether it is the ICHQ-11 or the CTT protocols and so on. In addition to that, there is immense opportunity for startups, especially in the arena of strategic and technical advisory for capacity building. 
Now that's where uh, low LMICs are focused on today. And the COVID has brought about a huge shift and, and there is immense opportunity and we do have some good examples within uh, tech invention. And this can be a revenue generating arm for startups because as my previous uh, esteemed panelists mentioned, vaccine development is time consuming, it requires a lot of uh, capital investments and so on. So, so you need to have the boat moving ahead with some parallel verticals and this can be one such vertical where you can look at some early stage revenues. There is also opportunity in the arena of IP and uh, regulatory services. This could be allied or aligned to strategic and technical advisory, but can also be an independent uh, service by itself. And this is where many companies worldwide, especially in the emerging markets, low middle income countries are looking at Indian companies to provide the service. Because as all of us are aware, vaccines is quite different compared to even biosimilars or for that matter, plasma products and so on. And it needs very, very specific expertise and people and startups focused into development have the expertise of IP and regulatory can share these allied services as a revenue generating arm. The third is, of course, uh, in the IT space where, of course, today is the arena of, uh, of all the techs. You have the ed techs, you have the prop techs, you have the med techs and so on. And, then, and it's all e-commerce and apps. There's a lot of focus on delivery, talking of the last mile delivery, the care up to the point of administration, the vaccine adverse event reporting system. And that's where people who have an ITBT interface can develop some of the very awesome apps, not just from an Indian perspective, but for the world at large. We do have ex uh, have uh, excellent examples of COVID or, or for that matter, my matter, Arogya Setu. Similar platforms could be developed for other countries from India. And last but not the least, this good opportunity in India for contract research and development. I know of a startup, uh, a very close friend just three years ago, who wasn't even incubated or didn't have infrastructure. It was just based on the profile and credentials. They picked up one candidate from the West for development in India. And subsequently today, it's just been three years and they have huge funding coming in for scale ups for commercial scale production, which has been a case study by itself. So these are some of the opportunities that are available for startups from India. But going forward, what can startups especially leverage in the vaccines ecosystem that India has to offer? Few aspects, of course, one is the DPIIT ecosystem, including global outreach. Uh, I, I must uh, tell you that a couple of months ago, we were trying finding it difficult to reach out to one of the government uh, institutions or labs in one of the countries where we were trying to get into a strategic collaboration. We reached out to Invest India and within a matter of a day or two, the, the communication started going through the diplomatic channels and the meetings were, were being set up. So I would say that this is an excellent platform to seek help and reach out. The second is, of course, we should be looking at local and uh, global grants. BIRAC is indeed a fantastic uh, platform. Dr. Shishindu did talk about it. We are one of the uh, biotech ignition grantees. And over the last about two months, at least we have shared our experiences because the new big scheme is out on what are the possible do's and do's and how to secure the grant with some of the incubation systems and accelerators. In addition to that, we do have a lot of global opportunities. What the big scheme did to us is, apart from the funds, it, it, it conferred a huge amount of credibility to what we are doing. Of course, our, our partners were signed out of IIT Mumbai. That also added tremendously to our, uh, to, to our credibility. And we talk about it in global circles. People do listen with rapt, rapt attention and we do get interest for further collaboration. Another aspect is to look at veterinary vaccines. Uh, people are, of course, uh, talking of uh, veterinary vaccines in a big way. We all are aware that most of the outbreaks in the recent past have been zoonotic, whether it is uh, monkeypox or whether it is uh, COVID itself or Zika and whatnot. We need to br break this transmission human to animals and animals to human. And the concept of One Health, which is coming up where we need to protect the animals and humans and the, and the plants and the fauna or the ecosystem. That's where the interests are. We are doing a study for one of the global donors for a human vaccine project in, an, in our study. As recent as last week, we recommended that a veterinary vaccine project should be considered more seriously given the trends and the dynamics of the local country, which has been picked up 
by the large donor agency. And this is again an area where we could focus. Also, the fact that AMR is becoming a huge challenge worldwide. Uh, in fact, uh, 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 vaccines is one of the areas or one of the tools which are also being looked upon to tackle the antimicrobial resistance. The funding opportunities for AMR are quite different. There is a separate cohort of global organizations which are well funded, which will fund development in AMR. In fact, we are again one of the fortunate ones to have a project in AMR where we are developing an endolysine platform technology for gram negative pathogens. And this has received tremendous interest from most of the global agencies within a span of almost about six months. Four of the global infectious diseases and AMR related credible conferences or abstracts have been accepted for presentation. And very and so far, as a startup, we were looking primarily at emerging markets. But over the last two to three months, the confidence that we have gained, we have started looking at North America and through a window into, into Canada. Week before last, I was in Toronto in one of the world's largest conferences called the Collision for Startups. And I must tell you the kind of interest that we have generated from companies in North America for early stage out licensing and collaborative development. So that's an area where uh, vaccine startups could look at. The agencies that focus on AMR are agencies like Guard P, Carbex, AMR Action Coalition, and so on, which uh, people focused in vaccines are relatively not aware of. So I would appeal to them to look at that as well. Of course, uh, we would uh, focus, we would also appeal to the startups to look at it from a platform perspective. What uh, in fact the previous platforms also talked about, uh, uh, the previous esteemed uh, panel members talked about. Look at it from a portfolio perspective, patents and publications. So far, we had conventional route patents. We have filed 15 of them, but now we will have our first PCT application going in the coming month. A publication, uh, we were late out here, but I must tell you in the fourth year of our operations, we got a publication in one of the reputed journals of human vaccines and therapeutics in Taylor and Francis. The next one is up for publication next month, again from uh, vaccines from Elsevier. So startups, I would encourage them to start off focusing on peer review in, uh, right after they start their research work and go on to publish their research through the actual research work subsequently which will give them a lot of traction and visibility. Also, they should be looking at a lot of local and global memberships, uh, local organizations like the Service Export Promotion Council of India, Biotech Consortium of India, the SME Chamber of India, support startups in a very big way. And also some of the global organizations support startups in a very big way. So you should be looking at securing those memberships. They are not very expensive, but it, they would help you with the right connects and so on. One more aspect is there is a new breed of investors who have come in. They are called as impact investors. In fact, there are a lot of groups on LinkedIn, if you browse, which specifically focus on impact investments. We are all aware it's difficult to get in investments into the vaccine development or, or for that matter, development into novel biotherapeutics because people look at ROI in year two, year three, and when are your break events and so on. Now that doesn't happen in vaccines because, because the lead times are quite long. The turnaround times are quite challenging. So here there are a breed of impact investors who are looking at creating a social impact, who are willing to invest at a cost. If we have the right kind of credentials, they would be willing to invest and focus not on an ROI, but what is the long-term impact that it would create. So we should be looking at that as well. <clears throat> and, and last but not the least, of course, bioincubators and accelerators. I was invited to an alumni meeting of my fellow pharmacists in Bangalore and as recent as about a month ago and few of my colleagues who have who are uh, who have set up new companies and startups they said they aren't uh, bio incubated in any of the uh, bio incubated bio incubation systems which means uh, still there are a lot number of startups who are not availing these facilities we are bio incubated in two centers one is bioridal and the second is uh, rcb bbb and i must confess the kind of facilities that we get, not only in terms of infrastructure, but also on public getting the RCGM approvals, getting the IBSC approvals. Now that's something that these incubations and accelerators support startups, which is the need of the R. Just one second. Again. Slides. Yeah. Uh, this is one of my last slides. Now where we've talked about what the startups should be doing. Just a bit of caution on what they should not be doing. One is 
do not get into the valuation game. Uh, we do see 105 unicorns in India, and uh, at least uh, some of my fellow colleagues in the vaccine development space, they have a fear of missing out saying that when are we going to become a unicorn or a decocon? We are not into the valuation game. In the vaccine domain, we are into the value creation game. So we should not be really bothered about what happens on that side. In fact, it's a fantastic thing about the unicorns and decocons. But at the same time, in the vaccine space, it, it takes time. It's just a one-off Moderna kind of a company which becomes a billion dollar because of various factors. Otherwise, we need to plan for linear growth and linear uh, curves as, as, as we go about. Uh, should we, we should be careful about early dilutions. I could be talking this offline if any of the uh, startups have any questions why we should be guarded about early dilutions. Uh, we should also ensure that especially all the legal aspects, the IP and the compliances are taken care of because even when you go in for a for a for a BIRAC grant or a big scheme grant, it is offered to companies which are private limited or LLPs, which comes with its with a range of compliances, and we should ensure that everything is in place and avoid high capex. We should be looking at getting making use of the infrastructure in the incubation systems. In fact, a couple of months ago, for scale ups, we wanted to set up our own commercial scale facility. We said, let us take the plunge or and the risk. But eventually what we realized is there are companies who are having spare capacity. So after a lot of due diligence and, uh, and mutual discussions, we got into a joint venture with an established large scale manufacturing company, a 50, 50 JV for scale ups, which takes us off the burden of high capex. So these are some of the models that one could explore as we go about. Having said that, we are all aware, uh, of course, the great thing of what Nelson and Maldera said, Life or death for a young child too often depends on, wh on whether he's born in a country where vaccines are available or not. The COVID did prove that. That's one reason why the narrative today is around uh, vaccine equity. And I must also say that what Winston Churchill said when he was trying to form the UN, he said we should never allow a crisis go waste. I think we're just coming out of a crisis. It's a huge startup ecosystem in India. We did go, we did have our, sh our share of the COVID impact, but we are on a resurgence now. And I'm sure if we have a global perspective, all of us do, will do extremely well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sayyid Ahmed. I believe that your quote on vaccines actually, I think it pretty much sums it up. Vaccines are uh, again, like giving us enlightening us and giving your insights on the startups and business opportunities in startups. Now, as we come to the end of the Biotech Spotlight series, I would like to thank, take this opportunity to thank all our esteemed speakers, Dr. Shishendu Mukherjee, Dr. Manju Joshi Pura, Mr. Sayyad Ahmed, Mr. Varun Sukh, to be, who took out the time to be there for the webinar. I would also like to take this opportunity to tell you that because there's an increased vigor for investments in the biotech sector, the government of India has come up with a new initiative called the Project Development Cell. We are happy to share that there's a dedicated PDC both with the Department of Pharmaceuticals as well as with the Department of Biotechnology. And of course, Invest India is here to aid, to act as a guide, advisor, and facilitator. Any investor who's, who's working, uh, who wants to set up operations or expand their businesses. I'm sure that we are very enlightened with the, with, after the webinar about the vaccines ecosystem and the market opportunity that is. Uh, I would also like all of you to switch on your camera so we can all take a screenshot. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for attending the webinar and also uh, our next series, next edition would be on clinical trials. So hopefully we will see you there. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.